Could you comment on Gen Re and goodwill impairment charges in the, in, since you purchased it and sure. how, how it's evolved in your thinking and if it even became a part of your thinking? Sure. The, the question is, uh, relates to the fact that if you buy a business at a price over tangible assets, that you set up a goodwill account and if at any time in the future that that goodwill becomes impaired, you should, should and, and must if the accounting is proper, run a charge to reduce that goodwill item. You run a charge through the uh, income account. Uh, we have a large goodwill item for Gen Re because it was the biggest acquisition we ever made. We paid substantially more than book. And the question is whether that goodwill is impaired. And certainly if the operations of Gen Re of the last couple of years, not including this year, but of the the years 98 through 2001, more or less, uh, were representative of the future, you would say that there has to be a good, big goodwill charge there, and I would agree with you. Uh, I think that as Genry is operating now and had the capacity at operate, and, and, and it's being realized now, uh, thanks to a couple of great managers we've got there, uh, I think that, uh, I, I, I personally think that Gen Re is worth more now today than, than at the time we bought it, and I think you will, it has, its float has increased substantially, and I think that you will see that that float, you will see the float turn out to be uh, cost-free over time. One thing I should have mentioned, actually, is, uh, and I looked at a draft of our 10Q, we have to, I think we should put this in there. We, Gen Re up until this year was discounting workers' comp reserves at 4.5%, uh, which was not conservative that we inherited that situation, but we have changed that to discounting comp reserves going forward at 1%. So the accounting is more conservative going forward now, 2003, by a fair margin than it was uh, in, in prior years and, and in a method we inherited. So that the figures you see would be somewhat better uh, if we had continued the old discounting at four and a half rather than going to the new discount rate. And in the draft I saw the 10Q, that wasn't in there. I think we should get that in there, uh, Mark, while I think of this. Charlie? Yeah, that, that accounting issue is of a type that is very common within Berkshire. We are so horrified by the terrible business decisions we see made all around us by people who are relying on over optimistic accounting, that we tend to almost reach for opportunities to make our accounting very conservative, way more than other people. We think it protects our business decision making as well as our financial integrity. I don't know why we ever got into this business of trying to get the accounting result as close to the chalk as we could possibly get it. What is wrong with the world when everything is a little bit underreported? I mean, yeah, generally people think that reporting, you know, and transparency and all that has improved over the years. You know, I, I felt much better working with the financial statements in 1960 than I feel working with financial statements in 2000. And frankly, I, 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 in many ways, I thought they taught me more about what the company was really about than the current ones do, even though there was far less detail. And what we really deplore is solving operating problems by accounting maneuvers. And, you know, Gen Re had some problems in the mid-80s when everybody did, and they went to discounting their workers' comp reserves. And they, you know, it was a quick fix, but it's like heroin. And you get on it, and uh, it's not easy to get off. And we, Charlie and I have seen that time and time again, people that think, you know, trade loading, whatever it may have been, they think they're going to solve something by playing accounting games. And they're encouraged, they're encouraged by their CFOs sometimes, and, and frequently they were in, encouraged by their big name auditors in one way or another to really play with the numbers. And it, it catches up with you. You might as well face reality immediately and, and, and uh, take whatever operating steps are necessary to, to, to solve problems, or if you can't solve them, just give up on them. But whatever you do, playing with the numbers is, is it, it never it never works although i guess if you're 64 and a half and you're going to retire at 65 it might get kind of tempting <laughs>